truth, logic, common sense, that gut feeling, and yes, even a little psychoanalysis. As we are once again together, you and I, to discuss Chad and Lori Daybell. It's been two years. Two years of many, many perspectives from all of you. You've got old KJ who gives her opinions. And then we have truth, logic, common sense, and gut feeling, and a little bit of psychoanalysis. And with all of that, there have always been differing opinions, uh, differing views, and I am one right now to say that there have been many times that people have disagreed with me, and I welcome that civil discourse. I do not like it when people want to personally attack me for anything that I might have an opinion about. But old KJ loves to get the whole environmental view of everything that's got to do with this case. You know, some would say that this situation that's going on with Lori Hellis is, you know, it's neither here nor there. You've got local, state, and federal media organizations that won't touch it. You have to wonder why that is. If this is such a a noble thing that Lori Hellis has done, then why aren't the media organizations following suit? Okay, folks, let's just be clear. OKJ okay, wants the cameras in the courtroom during the trial, and I would love to have it continuous with pretrial as well. But you know what? I, were, I think that, you know, I've been watching this for a while, and I've noticed in the last year, especially within the last six months, that people have turned on their head to start to denigrate this whole process, this whole adjudication process, or they're attacking the administrator of justice, which is Judge Boyce. It doesn't seem like it's been that long ago when people were getting their way about Judge Boyce's decisions that they were right in line with everything. You know, as long as they were getting their way, as long as they felt like everything was moving at their pace or they could see what they wanted to see. Folks, Judge Boyce is not a puppet for the, for the public. I can tell you that right now. He is a neutral arbiter. He is a neutral arbiter of justice. He's an administrator. He is not for the state and he's not for the defense. And so today I want to talk to y'all about something that's been on my mind for a little while, especially here within the last month, actually, because it seems like there are channels out here in YouTube world that are starting to not just give their opinions. They are throwing out here accusations of illegality of Judge Boyce. But in a year ago, um, nobody said anything. Let's just give an example out here. Let's go down memory lane, shall we? In August of 27th of 2020, Chad's attorney, John Pryor, asked Boyce to dismiss the whole case against Chad Daybell. Uh, Pryor claims that the accusations against Daybell made in the criminal complaint filed by Wood was vague and broad. But Judge Boyce denied his motion to dismiss. Everybody was for that. And John Pryor, he struck out, did he not? Everybody was in line with old Judge Boyce. And there's some out here today that are saying if we only had Judge Eddins, well, let's just continue now with Judge Boyce's decisions since we started this process in pretrial. John Pryor and Mark Means, you remember that ordeal? They tried to get Rob Wood taken off the case with this slimy-ass Garrett attorney recording Summer Shiflet and Rob Wood. Judge Boyce didn't allow that either. He didn't allow Rob Wood to be taken off the case. And make no mistake, y'all, the defense attorneys in this case will do anything, not only to attack the state, attack the grand jury, attack Judge Boyce. They'll do whatever they're going to do to try to denigrate this case. And guess what? They've got people out here that are in their corner, and you're going to see what I'm talking about here in a minute. 
They try to get Rob Wood disqualified. They try to uh, pry into Rachel Smith and all of this stuff. Anything they can do to chip away at the state's prosecution team, they're going to do. And, you know, make no mistake, y'all. The bottom line is, is they have attacked anything at all because they've got no case to get their clients off. Okay? None whatsoever. So what do they have to do? They have to attack this whole case. And KJ wants all of y'all to know that it's, it's disheartening to me that many, not just a year ago, was on the level saying the integrity of this case, the integrity of this case. Well, it seems like when people are not getting their satisfaction, they're not getting self-satisfaction and self-gratification, and they want to dress it up and say, well, we want to see it all and all this and that. At what cost are we talking about here? Does anybody really believe that Judge Boyce is doing something underhanded here. That all eyes are not laser focused on this man. This man's got every judicial integrity uh, panel and group looking straight at him. He can't take a shit without everybody knowing whether it's runny or dry, okay? This man is doing his job. And everyone's saying, well, look at all the sealed documents. Look at all that. This is... This is not fair. This is not fair. Well, what, what do you want? What do you want? You want to see it all at the expense of a, an adjudication process that needs to be done correctly without appeals, without mistrials. I mean, I would love to sit here and say I'd love to see it all. Shine some light on it, says a friend of mine. Well, I'll tell you what. If there is a light shown on this case, if the judge is able to share anything with us, then he will. But until then, this man knows, and he knows what to do in terms of, of uh, what he needs to do to be a neutral arbiter of administration of justice. Again, he's not for either side. He's doing his job. And I think people are forgetting that. And you know what's the sad reality of it all? There are some people out here that want to accuse this judge of all kinds of illegality. And they don't even realize that they're doing the work for the defense attorneys. I mean, it's, it's pathetic. Let's go on with Judge Boyce and his decisions. On March of 2022, Judge Boyce denies Pryor's motion to keep the cases separate. Nobody had a problem with that. Everybody was glad Chad and Lori were going to be tried together. It was a good, sound decision, says everyone. Then in April of 2022, the judge denies Pryor's motion to dismiss the indictment. Again, he's tried twice. John Pryor's tried twice to get this dismissed. The judge isn't going to go for it. May of 2022, judge uh, issues ruling, keeping the cases together, as I said. And during this year, Pryor and Thomas, Lori and Chad's attorneys, their defense attorneys, have shit all over the grand jury indictment that indicted Chad and Lori for murder. And everybody wants to know, why is everything so sealed up? Well, folks, let me tell you what. If John Pryor and uh, Archibald and Thomas and them want to throw their arrows and they want to mudsling and all of this and that, the judge is not going to allow this to prejudice the, the, not only the grand jury indictment, but the state's case. And this goes into this whole idea of Rachel Smith and Rob Wood. John Pryor has tried. He's even appealed the decision of having something sealed. Wonder why John Pryor wants everyone to know what he wants to say about Rob Wood and Rachel Smith. Because he wants to shit all over them too. And he wants everyone to know about it. And this basically comes down to a jury pool in Boise, Idaho. And who's going to know what? And now we have Lori's attorneys fighting to keep cameras out of the courtroom. Again, y'all know where I stand on this. But let me just say this. If the judge decides, and this is my opinion, okay? If he decides that there are not going to be cameras in the courthouse, can, can we blame him? And, and even though it would make us all upset, 
I don't go for this bullshit that he's trying to hide something, that he's doing the bidding of the church. That is a crock of shit. This man, I don't give a damn what his faith is. There are people that are not in his faith that's watching his ass. Does anybody want to wake up to reality? Does anybody even want to do that? And you know what? I just do not understand how there are people on the, in the YouTube world that have channels that want to promote this garbage. And all you see in the last couple of months is more and more people attacking Judge Boys. When before, when all the decisions he was making outside of sealing something, everybody was for that. Oh, as long as you're doing what we want you to do, Judge Boys, give me a break. Just give me a break. And I will reiterate this because we're going to go into this letter that was filed with uh, the court system there in this case on Chad and Lori's case by Lori Hellis. And I'm going to give my views on it, my opinions of it, because this woman has done nothing but, but uh, accused Judge Boyce, law enforcement, uh, uh, grand jury without any, absolutely no evidence. And I'll tell you something. These people out here that are all for shining a light on this case and let it all be laid bare. Well, folks, maybe somebody needs to do their homework and find out what is not supposed to be revealed. We're not just talking about medical and personal information. We're talking about when a defense attorney uh, attacks the state in a motion and they have to have a sealed hearing because John Pryor or Archie or Thomas want to sit there and make accusations that are not backed up in any kind of uh, case law or anything. If the judge really had proof that the state or the grand jury was wrong or he himself, if any of that was just clear cut, don't you think something would have been done by now? I mean, let's just, let's get grounded in this. So again, Judge Boyce is not a puppet for someone to go out here and make a lot of money on a book. I mean, Lori Ellis has a right, just like anybody else, to do whatever they want about any case. Uh, they can do whatever they want to do. But if they're going to put it out there, if they're going to put it out there, and they want the public to know about it, and she's got... YouTube channels backing her up so that they themselves can benefit. Then OKJ considers that a part of the environmental view of this case. And I'm going to go over it. And, and my opinions are my own. And again, there's a difference between opinions, accusations, and I'll tell you something. I respect all the people that come on this channel, whether I agree or disagree with them. And so, number one, if this video gets taken down, y'all are going to have your answer. If, this if people want to attack me on this video in the comments, you're going to have your answer. Because you know what? No one wants to hear a, a, a differing view of all of this. Nobody wants to hear it. They, only, they want confirmation bias. They want to go along with things that, uh, you know, that they themselves find pleasurable or self-gratifying. There is no self-gratification for these victims' family members. Right now, they are traumatized, and no one's thinking about them. No one, and I'll tell you something else. The victims' family members, they don't even need to be, even have to have an opinion about all of this. Why would they? It's irrelevant to the fact that they've lost their loved ones. So, Lori Ellis, you know, you know all y'all know, a while back, she filed this stuff. She wants everything to be revealed. She feels like things are being sealed up that shouldn't be. This woman actually thinks that she can write a Supreme Court justice, a Supreme Court justice by the name of Justice Moeller, and that she's going to get some kind of action. This judge is going to help her do whatever it is she's going to do, right? Well, first and foremost, for a retired attorney, which she says she is, she, and she's writing a book, she's under contract to write a book, 
She really needs somebody to come in and edit her book once she's done with it. Because she's shitty about punctuation. I have found so many run-on sentences. I'm, I mean, the spelling's correct, but then again, we've got spell correct, don't we? The bottom line is this woman, uh, she's doing this for publicity and publicity alone. She has no facts whatsoever to back up her accusations of illegality against Judge Boyce. And it's pathetic. She is doing the defense attorney's job for them. Oh, if this was really something that's going on, why? Why hasn't John Pryor and Archie and Thomas, why haven't they filed something saying the judge is suing too much? You want to know why? Because if anybody really took a good look at the case files on Lori and Child's, Chad's case, and you looked at the motions to seal and the order to seal, you will see that it is equal, uh, equal all the way down the line. John Pryor's asked for stuff to be sealed. The state has asked for stuff to be sealed. This is a neutral administrator, Judge Boyce is. And so for anyone thinking that this ceiling is helping the state or this ceiling is helping the defense, it's, it's equal. Both parties, let me be clear. Do your homework. Go and look and see why something's been sealed and who requested it. The state hasn't asked for anything sealed any more than the defense. Count them up. So there you go. That right there shows balance. That shows neutrality with Judge Boyce. And a lot of people want to keep it simple. A lot of people want to say, I just want to see it all. I just want to see it all. Well, I'll tell you what. Do you want a mistrial? Do you want appeals issues? Is it, is it that? Uh, I mean, are you just so drawn to it so much that you cannot see the real picture? And I'm not speaking for everyone on here, but there are a few on here that think that, you know, that this Lori Hillis is a hero, and she's doing all this and that. Well, I'll tell you what, why isn't the Idaho Bar stepping in? Why isn't a local, state, or federal media organization stepping in? Why isn't anyone joining Lori Hellis? Why isn't anyone uh, reporting on this heroic thing that Lori Hellis has done? Because you're going to find out in this letter to this Supreme Court justice, this woman is self-serving, and she's done nothing absolutely nothing, not one word about victims' rights, not one word wanting to uplift the victim's family members. All this is about is her own self-gratification, her own publicity stunt. That's exactly what it is. It's my opinion. I see it for what it is, and everyone else can think whatever they want to think. But here you go, all right? Dear Justice Moeller, I'm writing you because you are the head of the media committee of the court. Well, first of all, for this retired attorney, you would never say, dear Justice Moore. You would never do that. You would say attention. I mean, does this woman, is this a dear John letter? Is this a, some uh, an aunt down in Michigan? Who is this? Is this a personal friend or dear, dear Judge Moeller? This woman is doing this publicity shit. And all it's doing is causing people to turn on each other on YouTube. Some people were all for Judge Boyce. And as soon as they started hearing all this bullshit, all these accusations being echoed from Lori Hellis, from other YouTube channels, people started questioning his authority. Give me a break. This man is very competent. This man is going to do his job. He's not going to do anything that's going to cause an issue, y'all. Pure and simple. As I understand it, the Idaho Supreme Court either has or had a media and court uh, conflicts resolution panel. That was also known as the Fire Brigade. Unfortunately, I have not discovered how one refers a matter to this panel, so I'm contacting you directly. So why even bring it up, Lori Hellis? She wants to bring up the fire brigade, but she don't know how to get in touch with them. So she's going to tell this justice of the Supreme Court of Idaho, that's why I'm writing you. This is so Neanderthal, it's pathetic. I'm a retired defense lawyer, licensed inactive in Oregon and Arizona, and you need to take your ass back to Oregon and Arizona. Go back. 
You're in Idaho. You're sticking your damn nose into something that should not be done. If you were doing it for the victim's family members, OKJ would have a whole different view of it. But I see right through Lori Hillis. I am an author under contract with a publisher to write a book about the Lori and Chad Daybell case. And the case is assigned to your Fremont County District Court successor, Judge Stephen Boyce. Well, there you go. This is her reason. This is her reason. Do you think that, uh, that these New York Times bestsellers did, wanted to do this as well? Did they see anything in it? Did the defense attorneys, did they see stuff was getting sealed too much? And they had to uh, stick their nose in it? No, but Lori Hellis is under contract to write a book, and she wants it all. Well, I'll tell you right now as I look at you, if and only if she gets even an iota of any of it, which I don't think she will, it'll all be redacted. But then again, she's liable to come out, oh, I've hit the jackpot. Oh, my YouTube uh, uh, channel friends over here, I've got you covered. Keep spewing the bullshit. I've been covering this case since the beginning, and I've recently found information that I find very troubling. Oh, really? Really? You've been, you have been covering this case from the beginning, and just recently, just recently, you've been here two years. It's got to be at least two years, right? But just recently, you've discovered something troubling. What is it? Since this case began in March of 2020, Judge Boyce has ordered what is, in my experience, an unusual amount of documents sealed. The number of sealed documents led me to research the criteria for sealing documents in Idaho cases. I discovered that Judge Boyce has not followed the procedure set out in Idaho Criminal Administrative Rule 32. He did not hold a hearing after notifying parties and interested parties and did not make any written findings. Well, you know what? This letter is a little too late because the judge told Hellis that she didn't do the thing properly and that she would have to give the interested parties notice. She went, she filed that, she did what Judge Boyce told her to do. And what has happened now? October 13th, she's going to get her hearing. So this whole paragraph here that he didn't follow the administrative rule 32, he's following it, you dummy. As a media member, okay, you're an author, you're a media member. I filed a motion July 30th, 2022 to unseal documents. I filed a motion to intervene in the case to challenge the sealed documents. Judge Boyce denied my motion on August 18th of 2022, finding that my motion to intervene was not a proper filing in Idaho, and it wasn't. It was nothing personal to this woman. She went in there and, oh, motion to intervene, didn't know anything. This, this retired attorney didn't know how to do it properly, and he could have just said, you're denied, but he went on to direct her how to do it properly. I revised the motions and, re and refiled them on August 24th of 2022. I pur purposely omitted my home mailing address in my motion and sent it to the court in a separate letter. She did not want to know anyone to know where she was living, but she wants to file something without any address, nothing on it. You can't do that in a court system. And this woman who says she was an officer of the court, that she was a practicing attorney in two states. You can't just go in there and file something without giving a return address. And even though she says she put it in a separate thing, you can't do it. There are procedures, administrative procedures, to go and file this stuff. It seems to me she needs to go back to uh, 101 Law School. The court didn't accept that and rejected my filing the same day, pursuant to Idaho Criminal Rule 2.3A4. I then rented a mailbox and refiled the documents on Friday, August 25th of 2022. The motions remained in the Fremont County's Court's Odyssey e-file under review for seven days before they were, uh, were returned late on Friday afternoon for an error in the document footer. It's clear that the court has instructed the clerk to comb the documents for my mis any mistakes 
and is playing games to avoid hearing the motions. I have now refiled my motions for the fourth time. This woman says she has been an officer of the court, and I'm sure she's well aware well of the of the county clerk's office there and how they have bucos of cases to have to deal with. And she wants to accuse the county clerk's office of playing games and that they were instructed. Who were they instructed? She has no proof of any of this shit. She has none. But she's going to lay it out there. You know why? Because every accusation that she levels toward this court, this district court with Judge Boyce, the county clerk's office, or anything like that, it makes them look bad. Does, does she really believe in the integrity of the case? Does she really believe in transparency? She's so quick to accuse this clerk's office of playing games. No, it's all about you got to do things the right way. And seven days, boy, she got fast service because these county clerks have to deal with it all. And maybe she should, now that she's retired and working on this book, maybe she should go apply for a job as a county clerk and see how she likes it. When some asshole walks in there, files stuff, having to file it several times. You think these county clerk people want to have to deal with her filing something four times? Oh, maybe the second time she still made a mistake. Let's just go on and push it through. No, it's got to be done the right way. And she obviously doesn't give a shit. She wants to accuse the county clerk's office. Not only the county clerk's office, but someone, wonder who, told the county clerk's office to comb through it. Make sure if you see, if there is not an eye on that, uh, on that eye there, there's not a little dot there. If that T's not crossed, just push it on out. Give me a break, y'all. This woman, uh, you can tell, number one, she's writing, Dear Supreme Court Mueller, She's got errors all through in terms of punctuation through her, this, I mean, she might as well be writing a blog and sending it to him. This is a legal process that you have to do in order to even get the attention of a Supreme Court justice, but she doesn't see that. And maybe that's really what it, it, it is all about. She thinks, well, I'll file this. I'll file this letter to the Supreme Court Justice and I'll level all these accusations, not only against the grand jury, law enforcement, and Judge Boyce, but I, I will level it all. The county clerk's office there. I, I mean, I'm going to just accuse them all of everything. D does anyone really believe that this retired attorney has any evidence of that? Let's move forward. As I am sure you know, the Daybell case has garnered international attention. I write a popular blog about the legal issues in the case and have appeared on two popular YouTube true crime programs discussing the case. And I'll tell you something about these YouTube crime channels that she's discussed on, on their channels and all this and that. They're pushing this shit out and they should, they should be ashamed of themselves. No one has said anything about the integrity of this case and no one wants to give Judge Boyce any credit whatsoever. And it's, it's sad because common sense says that everyone, everyone that's anyone in the legal world, uh, whether it's this court, whether it's the Supreme Court, whether it's these integrity, judicial integrity groups, they're all checking and balance, Judge Boyce. But she's going to level these accusations anyway, don't you know? People interested in the case know me. So what does that mean? So people interested in the case know me? I'll tell you, I, the only way I know Lori Hillis is she's uh, pulling out all this shit out her ass. That's the only thing I see. And she's uh, been very clear. This isn't about the victim's family. This is about writing a book. This is about she's under contract. And she wants to get the goodies. Well, she can get the redacted shit if she gets anything at all. The, this person... Oh, oh, excuse me. People interested in the case know me. So after I filed motions to unseal the documents, I was contacted. Y'all, Lori Hellis was contacted by an internet detective. Uh, 
This person is an avid internet researcher and gave me some troubling information. Well, I'll tell you what, Lori Hillis, you're talking, you're sending a letter, dear Supreme Court Justice, can you not include this internet detective's name, huh? Are you trying to protect your source there? I think the judge deserves to know who this internet detective is, okay? Uh, you know, if you're not even going to include the name of the person to back your ass up, not a single damn word in here you can back up. Early in the case, the internet detective researched all the people involved and found some social media posts that bothered them. It seems that several people close to the case, including the judges, the prosecutors, and law enforcement officers, were post posting inappropriate comments online. The internet detective, who wishes to remain anonymous, documented their findings and sent copies to both the prosecution and the defense. Judge Boyce and Judge Eddins, prosecutors and law enforcement, may have been in a county employee Facebook group. It's difficult to substantiate since they have all scrubbed the social media accounts. Okay, so she's saying nothing can be substantiated. But she's not talking about, has she said anything about John Pryor? Um, well, why don't somebody go on there and count up how many times John Pryor's asked something to be sealed? Is she equally delving it out? Is she, or is this all about Judge Boyce, law enforcement, the prosecution? It looks a little, little, little one-sided to me, does it not? Does it not look like this woman is, is, she is definitely, she is playing with her defense attorney hat. She is on the side, in my opinion, of John Pryor and Archibald. That's what I say. Mr. Daybill's attorney, John Pryor. Okay, here she goes. Is she going to say something was troubling about him? Is she going to say something that, uh, is she going to accuse John Pryor of something bad? Let's see. Mr. Daybell's attorney, John Pryor, filed motions based on the information. First, he asked to dismiss the indictments because of ir ir irregularities in the grand jury. I speculate. She's speculating to a Supreme Court justice here that at least one of the jurors must have seen the information in the Facebook group post. She is accusing a grand jury member She's speculating, though, but she bothers to make it into a sentence to a Supreme Court justice where everybody can get access in the portal on Chad and Lori's cases. A letter to the judge there. She is speculating. This is a retired attorney who should know better than to be speculating or surmising or wondering or anything like that. And she sure don't need to be uh, relying on an internet detective who wants to remain anonymous. This judge wants to know if she's going to bother him with a Dear John letter. Let the judge know who all these people are and let them see all of this. Next, Mr. Pryor filed a motion to dismiss the case or to, and to disqualify all three prosecutors. And Judge Boyce also denied those motions. And rightly so. Rightly so, because there was no evidence whatsoever that the state of Idaho prosecution team did anything wrong. But she's looking at it from John Pryor's point of view, don't you know? Today... The court held a hearing on that motion. The hearing was, of course, closed to the public. All motions, hearings, documents, and information associated with those motions have been sealed. I understand Judge Boyce has also issued a secret sealed gag order in the case. The level of secrecy is alarming and likely illegal. Well, I'll tell you what, this woman wants to sit there and accuse Judge Boyce of doing something illegal. The reason Judge Boyce sealed all of that up, and he has sealed stuff for John Pryor as well, the reason he's done it is because there's been a lot of mudslinging going on, and the judge does not want to see anything prejudicial for either parties, interested parties, not this stupid hellish woman who wants to write a damn book and make some money. And she has not said one word about the victim's family members. Not one, because she don't care. She does not care about the trauma that these victim's family members are going through. My opinion, it's as clear to me as it's ever been. 
The First Amendment protects press access to criminal matters to ensure that the government is doing its job properly. That that transparency ensures that the defendants receive a fair trial. And here she goes. She's going to bring up the victim's family members. Can be assured justice has been served. Okay, well, let's stop there. She is saying First Amendment, right? That the media. Well, why didn't all these other media organizations put their little uh, filings in there? Because they themselves see that everything's on track. And I will tell you this, Lori Hellis, you've got an anonymous internet detective that wants to shit all over the prosecutor, Judge Boyce, the grand jury and all that. Well, I've got an anonymous source that says everyone on a local, state, and federal level in terms of uh, media, national, they think you're a damn joke. And the way that you've written this out and what you're doing is absolutely unconscionable. It is impossible to fully explore the extent of the possible prejudice to who? The defendants. To the defendants. The prejudice to the defendants. Uh, what about the prejudice to the case in chief, Lori Hellis? Because all, all you're listing here is the possible prejudice to the defendants. Why not talk about that this could prejudice the integrity of this case, the adjudication of this case, the administration of this case by Judge Boyce, the fact that the state of Idaho has Rob Wood, Lindsey Blake, and Rachel Smith there trying to do everything they can. They themselves have a duty. They themselves have a duty to make sure that everything is done properly for the defense as well. So they're, they're going to protect that. They don't want to see appeals. They don't want to see a mistrial. But when someone uh, wants to file this in these cases so that everyone in the public can see, it's, it's a damn shame that everything she's leveled against uh, this whole process is one-sided and with no evidence whatsoever. The only thing she sees is their stuff that's been sealed that she can't get a hold of. She can't get her self-gratification. She can't get her material for her books. But we're going to go over that here in a minute. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, somebody will understand what I'm saying when we get to the nitty-gritty. Yet, each time Judge Boyce seals another document, he claims he's doing so to protect the defendant's right to a fair trial. Well, is Judge Boyce lying? Is Judge Boyce saying, I'm, I'm sealing this up so that the defendants have a right to a fair trial? Is he lying? Is he trying to do something nefarious? Is he taking orders from the church? Is he, is he doing something so uh, this case will fall apart? It'll, uh, Lori and Chad will get off scot-free at the end and in the appeals or a mistrial or something? Give me a break. Nobody wants to use their common sense on any of this. In fact, it appears Judge Boyce has engaged. It appears, it appears, it appears, uh, has been engaged in a systematic cover-up of the possible misconduct of the prosecutors, law enforcement, himself, and his judicial colleague. So she is leveling another accusation against all, I mean, the state, Law enforcement, Judge Boyce, she's, maybe she needs to go back and look at all the sealed stuff John Pryor did. Maybe she should update and put a supplement to her letter to the Supreme Court there and say, you know what? This was so one-sided. This was a one-sided thing. I want to make sure that I cover the other side and that John Pryor's asking for all these sealings. But no, it's all about the state Judge Boyce and law enforcement, and she's attacking them. She's attacking the, the integrity of this case. That's what she's doing. And there are people out here right now that are listening to all this garbage about her being a hero, and let's see it all and all this crap. They don't even stop to think about what's best for the victim's family members. The best that could happen for the victim's family members is that this damn woman wait wait until after the adjudication process to do all this. But no, she's got to get her publicity, you see. She's got to get her publicity. But guess what? No local, state, or national news uh, media is going to pick this up. I haven't seen anything. Poor Lori Harris. She's not going to get it out there. 
The only way she's going to get it out there is to file it. And she's going to do it in such a manner that, you know, this Supreme Court justice is looking at this stuff where she's saying, it looks like, or I can only speculate. You know, this woman, she absolutely has something missing in her brain. Uh, to be a, used to be an attorney, used to be an officer of the court in terms of an attorney, for her to write this stuff down tells me all I need to know. She's self-promoting. She's wanting to get her book out here, and she wants to be the one to do it, and she's going to take the, t the other YouTube channels that are spewing out all this shit. She's going to give them a little bit of red meat here and there. <coughs> <coughs> and then, um, as recently as August 25th of 2022, he entered another order reaffirming the sealing of all the documents relating to the misconduct doubling down. And the reason Judge Boyce did this is because there's no proof that any of this shit ever happened. And if he lets all this happen, John Pryor's already tried to appeal it. You know why? He wants it to be made public. He wants to shit all over this case. But do you think Lori Hellis cares that John Pryor's taking a squat and taking a shit on the state's case in chief? No. She can just add that in her book. She ain't thinking about this process. All she's thinking about is making money on her book. In the meantime, my motion to unseal the documents is repeatedly rejected so that Judge Boyce does not have to rule on them and risk opening the documents. You know what? This woman, uh, she's so self-centered. She actually thinks Judge Boyce is in there, in his, at his desk, in chambers going, I got to find out a way. I've got to find out a way not to unseal this. I'm going to get in cahoots with the county clerk over here. Hey, y'all, when Lori Hellis, when she files something, make sure to find any kind of mistake on it because I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid of following the law. Give me a damn break. Give me a damn break. While the pre-child social media posts were, were ill-advised, possibly prejudicial, and in violation of RPC 3.6, it is the systematic cover-up of the information that is most troubling. Uh, systematic cover-up. Uh, I think Judge Boyce is doing his job. I think Judge Boyce is trying to be a neutral administrator of justice here. He's allowed just as many sealed things for John Pryor and Archie and them as he has the state. And Lori Hellis doesn't want to bring that out to the Supreme Court judge. But, you know, even he can look through the cases there on the portal and see that everything's the way it's supposed to be. And poor Lori Ellis just can't stand it. So because she can't get a hold of that, because she can't get a hold of that material, what's she going to do? She's shitting all over everything. And yes, I'll use that word shit as many times as I want, because the bottom line is, is Lori Ellis is all for shitting on this case. There you go. Said it again. Yesterday, Miss Vallow's attorneys filed a motion to exclude cameras from the courtroom for future court proceedings. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that motion has the potential to further limit the access of the press to the proceedings, and we don't know how the judge is going to uh, rule on this. I have a view that he's going to take the cameras out. But you know what? Many of y'all uh, might disagree with this. Just as I said back when Rob Wood said he didn't want cameras at Chad's preliminary hearing, I want this case to be done right. I want this case to be adjudicated properly. This, this case has blown out uh, so high profile. And that's a good thing if you're looking at the deterrent for future people that want to try this shit. But this woman, absolutely, she absolutely wants to accuse. She wants to do whatever she can to denigrate the good in all of this. That's what she's trying to do. <clears throat> Your Honor, I sincerely hope that I am wrong. Oh, wait a minute. She says, Your Honor, I sincerely hope I'm wrong. Well, through the whole damn letter, she is leveling accusation after accusation. And her speculation or her assumptions doesn't seem to be leaning toward anything neutral at all. It's only being leaning toward that the state has done something wrong, 
Judge Boyce has done something wrong. Law enforcement has done something wrong. The grand jury's a crock of shit. John Pryor, Thomas, Archie. Why haven't they filed with Lori Hellis or after Lori Hellis? Because they don't have to. It's in the file now. And they've got another line item that they can add to their appeal. And everyone has Lori Hellis to thank for that. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, this woman, she can uh, do whatever it takes. She can, uh, what is it, rent a mailbox because she don't want to give an address. She can file these things four times. She's got a stake in this. She has a contract to write a book. Well, guess what? Two New York Times bestsellers, Leah Soddle and this other New York Times, uh, I forgot his name, but you know who I'm talking about. We went over it. I'm all for writing books, but not at the expense of leveling accusations against this whole damn process, one-sided. It's ridiculous. But as a former officer of the court myself and a lifelong advocate for the rule of law and the Constitution, I can't sit by and watch these government officials subvert justice. These government officials subvert justice. She is accusing Judge Boyce of subverting, subverting justice. The prosecution, Rob Wood, Lindsey Blake, Rachel Smith, subverting justice. Just because she can't get her, her hands on the meat in those sealed documents. Oh, I'll tell you what, this woman, she is rich. And any of these YouTube channels that are promoting this, all you're doing, all you're doing is spewing garbage. And it's not gonna float. It's just not gonna float. And she, of course, wants to bring up that she's a lifelong advocate for the Constitution and all, and uh, I, can, I can't sit by and watch this. She can't sit by and watch it because she doesn't have any new material for her book. She might as well go and grab a couple of copies of these New York Times bestsellers and uh, plagiarize because she's not going to get a hold of them. I guarantee you that. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. I hope you can assist me in bringing the conspiracy of silence to the open. The conspiracy. The conspiracy of silence. Is she bringing up a conspiracy to commit a murder? No, no. It's just conspiracy of silence. She's attacking this whole process. And again, she only mentions the victims' uh, families deserve a, a, a fair trial. Well, is, does this mean that nobody can have confidence in Judge Boyce or the state's case in chief? Nobody can have that. And everybody's going to shit all over uh, Judge Boyce because they can't have their way, because they want to see more. All of us want to see more. All of us want to see cameras in the courtroom. Uh, we want some transparency. I want some transparency. But I can tell you right now, I wouldn't dare be writing a Supreme Court justice of Idaho and saying that all of these things that the judge is doing or that the state is doing or that uh, something's wrong with law enforcement and what they've been doing, she needs to really check herself, really. And, and it's just disgusting. These other YouTube channels want to throw this stuff out here. It, it's pathetic. It really is. So I guess I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll say that she, she wants to contact the uh, Idaho Supreme Court there directly. She wants to get a hold of one of those Supreme Court justices. Well, how about this, Lori Hellis? The state of Idaho Judicial Branch, uh, the Supreme Court of Idaho's mission statement. Have you read that? The mission statement of the all Idaho courts. Here it is. There's four goals. There's four goes for them. Uh, do you think that these Idaho courts, uh, they have a mission statement under the Supreme Court of Idaho that they're not even going to look at this? That they're not, that Judge Boyce is not going to know what he can and cannot do? Goal one is to provide timely and partial case resolution through legally fair procedures. Goal two, ensure access to justice. Goal three, promote effective, innovative service. And go for, and this is the one I want to emphasize for Lori Ellis, increase public trust and confidence in the Idaho courts. 
And under that, you got, it says, protect the communities, reduce recidivism, and hold offenders accountable through evidence-based sentencing practices. Increase awareness of the importance of the jury system, as well as the public's participation in that system, and develop strategies to improve jury service and appreciation. Protect and empower vulnerable individuals under guardianship or uh, through education, monitoring, enforcement, and community support, and most importantly, foster uh, civility among the bench and the bar. And, and the Idaho Supreme Court, they've got the Idaho uh, State Bar there. You think these people over here uh, are saying, wow, I'm looking at this case here, the Chad and Lori Daybell case, and I see all this being sealed up. Maybe I should check into this. No, we've got Lori Hellis, who doesn't even belong there, who's just wanting to make money off of this whole case. And she wants to blanket it all with the transparency and constitutionality. Give me a break. So let's look at the Idaho Code of Judicial Conduct. Canon 1, a judge shall uphold and promote the independence, integrity, and impartiality of the judiciary and shall avoid impropriety and the appearance and the appearance of impropriety. Okay, well, maybe Lori Hellis is saying, because everything's so sealed up, it just has an appearance that he's hiding things from us. Well, let's just look at this under this uh, Idaho Code of Judicial Conduct that Judge Boyce has to abide by. You've got Rule 1.1. He has to comply with the laws. You think this judge just kind of left out the laws in any of this? Does, does anyone really believe that Judge Boyce has done something illegal here? Well, Lori Ellis seems to think he has, and her internet detective has got the goods on him. Give me a break. Rule 1.2, promoting confidence in the judiciary. Is Lori Hellis, is she promoting confidence in the judiciary? Her being a former attorney, an officer of the court, is she uh, giving any confidence at all? No, she's not. There is a difference between scrutiny and accusations of illegality. And this woman should be ashamed of herself. And in that Rule 1.2, it says a judge shall act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the independence, integrity, and impartiality of the judiciary and shall avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety. Lori Hellis, she's not uh, all for that. The only thing Lori Hellis is all for is unseal things so that I can see them, so I can get them from my book that I'm in a contract with, and I can share them with these other YouTube channels. Let's build this up. Let's make the state and the judge and the whole process look like dog shit. It's ridiculous. But let's just focus in. Let's focus in on a rule here, 1.3 that the judge has to abide by. And if you ain't heard anything I've said today other than the word shit, then you're not listening. Rule 1.3, avoiding abuse of the prestige of the judicial office. This is, this is a rule that the judge, he has to make sure he can't abuse it. He can't abuse it. And here's the definition of that. A judge shall not abuse the prestige of judicial office to advance the personal or economic interest of who? The judge or others or allow others to do so. And Judge Boyce cannot allow Lori Hellis to advance their personal economic interest. He can't allow it. He's going to hear it under that rule there. He's got October 13th. She went out. She served the interested parties, which was the state, the defense teams. Now she's going to be there, and she's going to get chewed up and spit out because she's just an interested party who wants to accuse one side of doing all this wrong and illegality. But the judge has to remember to stay neutral and in neutrality, he says, it says right here, avoiding abuse of prestige of judicial office, that 
You can't advance the personal or economic interests or allow others to do so. So Lori Hellis is shit out of luck. He's not going to allow her because she's made it clear in her letter to the Supreme Court Justice. She's an author. She's, she's in contract. She wants this material. And not a single damn person in the whole United States, not a single journalist, not a single author, nobody has filed this kind of stuff because Lori Hellis knows good and damn well it ain't going to fly, but it might just promote her book. Canon 2, a judge shall perform the duties of judicial office impartially, competently, and diligently. And under Idaho Code of Judicial Conduct 2.15, responding to judicial and lawyer misconduct. So Lori Hellis needs to really go back and she needs to sit down and read this because these right here tell you right here that that. If there is some kind of accusation that's leveled against Judge Boyce, and she's spelling it out to this Supreme Court justice that he might have done something e illegal, this is the proper way to handle it. There's an A, a B, a C, and a D, and this includes judges and lawyers. A judge having knowledge that another judge has committed a violation of this code that raises a substantial question regarding the judge, judge's honesty, tr trustworthiness, or fitness as a judge in other respects shall inform the appropriate authority. A judge having knowledge that a lawyer has committed a violation of the rules of professional conduct that raises this as well. We're going to focus in on the judge, though. So if this Supreme Court justice had any evidence, which he don't, she sends some stupid-ass dear John thing to him. She can't even get it. She's all leveling the accusations with no proof whatsoever. None whatsoever. Okay? And this other stuff about people being on Facebook or there were posts that were unethical and all this and that, that was last year. Uh, why is she handling it now? She's throwing anything she can up against the wall because she'd do anything to feed the beast of the money that she wants to make off this case, pure and simple. And the ones that are being her little echo chamber and the ones that are, oh, I want transparency. What this, what's going on with all this ceiling is wrong. We need to see it all. We need to see every bit of it. What, what, what price tag are, is anyone willing to, to uh, pay there, huh? If it's legal, anything that's legal, the judge is going to let us as a public see it. If it's, if it would be wrong, if it would cause a mistrial, if it would call, cause prejudice, if it would cause uh, appeals issues, he's going to seal it, okay? He's going to seal it, and it's unfortunate, uh, yeah, but it's just the laws. And if he decides no cameras at trial, well, I'll tell you what, that, that judge in Ohio, uh, he, he said uh, that these uh, state's witnesses could either opt out or not, uh, to testify under recording or camera. Each state is different. And then you look at the whole federal court system. They don't allow cameras at all. So the bottom line is, is that uh, if Judge Boyce rules that cameras are not going to be at this trial, it's going to disappoint a lot of people. And I am on board with cameras being in the courtroom for the trial and for pretrial. That's what I want. But I don't want it so much that I'm willing to level accusations against people. I'm not willing to uh, uh, sign on to this bullshit that Judge Boyce has done something wrong or that the church is, is, is using Judge Boyce as a puppet. The bottom line is, is that it's unrealistic and it's not, it's not reality. You know, people get frustrated. People want to see more. People want all that red meat. People want to know that Lori, uh, if Lori Hellis got to hold all this material or whatever, they want to buy that. And, and that's, you know, people can do whatever they want to do. Lori Hellis can do whatever she wants to do. But I'll tell you this right now, from the day one that I opened this channel, I wanted to see the adjudication of justice. And I've put a lot of faith in this process. I believe in Judge Boyce. I kid around with all of y'all. 
about having an uh, innocent crush on him. Y'all, that's just for fun. The bottom line is I have enough common sense to know this judge ain't going to do anything that is going to cause any kind of mistrial or issues like that. But I guarantee you this, Lori Hell is filing in her little letters and her motions and her October 13th is going to shut the door on all of that. She's, she's giving it her best shot. And she, she feels like, well, you know, I've got to, I got to get the material. If I can get it, I'm going to get it before anybody else. And I, and I'm all for the constitution and transparency and all this and that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's so interesting when she decided she's been on this case from day one, go back, look and see how many uh, sealed things all the way back to judge Edens, but go on, move forward and, and see when it was that she decided that she just had enough. This is all wrong. The woman is pathetic. But then it talks about a judge who receives information indicating a substantial likelihood that another judge has committed a violation of this code shall take appropriate action. Well, I guarantee tell you as I look at you right now, this Supreme Court Justice took a look at Lori Hellis's letter to him, his dear Supreme Court Justice letter there, with all these run-on sentences and all these accusations, and he's probably up there laughing. And he probably understands that you know, this is a woman who's desperate. She's desperate enough to go into Idaho, file all this stuff, open up a mailbox, uh, get other YouTube channels on board with her. She says everybody knows her. She does a popular blog. She's done interviews on YouTube channels. Let me tell you something. I'm not a bit interested in that woman denigrating this case. That's what she's done. And uh, after October 13, she, she will be uh, irrelevant. She will be irrelevant, and I hope that her contractual agreement includes her plagiarizing what's already out there because the bottom line is she's not getting anything else, and if she does, just a snowball's chance in hell that she gets something unsealed, it'll be so redacted. And you, you might think, well, KJ, why don't you want us to see it? I do want to see everything that is legal, that is legal, and there is no doubt that when you got John Pryor and Lori's attorneys over here trying to chip away at the grand jury indictment, trying to denigrate Rob Wood and Rachel Smith, and now you got Lori Hellis doing all three, including the judge and law enforcement, it is pathetic, it is disgusting, and the truth is going to set everyone free, and it ain't the truth about things you might find out in a sealed document. The truth is, is we can only see what we're able to see according to law in Idaho. And Judge Boyce is doing his job. And Lori Hellis needs to be ashamed of herself. And these YouTube channels out here that are, are spouting this stuff, they don't know what they're talking about. All they're thinking about is the money. That's all they're thinking. They're not thinking about the family members of these victims. They're not thinking about them at all. Taking action to address known mis misconduct is a judge's obligation. So this Supreme Court judge has been told by Lori Hellis that Judge Boyce is not doing his job, that it could be possibly illegal, that all this stuff is illegal, it's going on. She's got an internet detective that's right on it, although they can't supply this judge with any real empirical evidence. It's, it's laughable, really. So this Supreme Court justice will, he'll, he'll look into it, but I, I guarantee you he's snickering about it. A reporting judge's duty is fulfilled by reporting the alleged violation to that judge's super, super, uh, supervisor authority or the Idaho Judicial Council. Paragraphs A and B, which I've done read, impose an obligation on the judge to report to the appropriate disciplinary authority the known misconduct of another judge or a lawyer that raises a, a substantial question regarding the honesty, trustworthiness, or fitness of that judge or lawyer. Ignoring or denying known misconduct among one's judicial colleagues or members of the legal profession undermines a judge's responsibility to participate in efforts to ensure public respect for the judicial system. So this Supreme Court Justice will. He'll, he'll, he's not going to report that Judge Boyce did something illegal. But he's going to he's going to talk. 
to Judge Boyce, and he's not going to reprimand Judge Boyce. He's going to say some woman who's writing a book has sent this letter, this informal letter to me. Uh, you know, if this Lori Hellis really thought that something bad was going on, something troubling, something illegal, if she really thought that, does she not have it within her to get an attorney to send the right letter to a Supreme Court justice? The state and the defense teams have asked Judge Boyce to seal this up. They are the interested parties. Lori Hellis is not. Uh, she is per se one now because they're going to do that October 13th hearing. He is abiding by that rule that she says he's broke. What she she just doesn't understand is, is that this has done nothing but make her look bad. <clears throat> And people need to do their homework and go through every single motion to seal and find out whose motion it is and why perhaps they were sealed. Um, and, and this goes beyond medical and personal information. There are reasons. There's a lot of pretrial stuff going right now. Uh, no doubt about it. The defense attorneys want to do whatever they can to paint the state as doing something wrong, or they want that grand jury remanded back, which the judge didn't allow. Nobody had a problem with that. Everybody was so happy when he did everything they wanted him to do. But And we've all complained about him sealing stuff up, folks, but let's get real. There's just certain things that, by law, we're not allowed to see. I'm sorry that some people want to see it all. But it, again, at what cost? What can this? What can happen if he makes that misstep and unseals something that prejudices the state or the defense teams? Hmm. Do we want? Do we want Rachel Smith and Rob Wood drug through the mud? Is that what we want? Because if Lori Hellis has her way and that stuff is unsealed, like John Pryor wants, he's already appealed the decision once anyway. He's appealed it. He wants it out there. He wants to make Rob Wood and Rachel Smith look like shit. And Lori Hellis, she wants it all made public so she can write her book. She don't care about the repercussions of the state's case in chief. She doesn't care at all. Do we want to make public the bullshit that John Pryor and Lori's team is trying to do to the grand jury? Because that's other stuff that's sealed as well. There was a whole, we all have hypothesized what that could have been about. Well, she's in that letter to a Supreme Court justice saying that there might have been a jury member that saw this or that. She don't know. She don't know. But she wants to throw the accusation out there. Does she really think throwing accusations out there is going to get her some uh, some standing or anything like that? I guarantee tell you, when she goes to that court hearing on October 13th, one will have to ask the question, does John Pryor want the things that he asked to be sealed, unsealed? He has a reason for wanting the judge, judge boys to seal what he has. Does the state, does the state want Lori Hellis to unseal things that they've wanted? Hmm? Because again, all you have to do is count them up, the sealings. It's not all one-sided. But Lori Hellis makes it one-sided in favor of, of the defense more than the victim's family members. All you have to do is lead, read the letter yourself. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post that on the community wall so you can see how this woman has done nothing but shit all over everything. <clears throat> Judge Boyce has everyone and their mama watching every damn movie makes. Every every movie makes. And, and can you imagine this judge, Judge Boyce, Having to say, because you know he's already seen it. It's been filed. This letter from Lori Hellis going over his head to the Supreme Court, to this uh, Supreme Court Justice Mueller, and leveling accus accusations against Judge Boyce. This woman's pathetic. This woman is unethical. This woman, I have no pity for her whatsoever. This isn't about transparency for Lori Hellis. This is about her uh, and her contract for her book. She wants to make money. And the other YouTube channels that are supporting her, they want to make money too. That's all it's about. They're not thinking about how this can um, mess with the case. They're not thinking about how this looks. 
And it's, you know, what's so unfortunate about it all is I've noticed an increase here in the last month or so since she started all this crap. I didn't want to address it. I, I gave out some questions and left it to all of y'all about Lori Hellis. But I'm not going to sit by knowing who I am, just an old country girl from Tennessee who has a heart for justice, who wants to seek justice through understanding, someone who uh, cares that a fair trial is put in place. This woman is doing nothing but leveling accusations and making this whole case look like a circus. That's all she's doing. And it's sad, it really is. You have state and national media organizations with teams of lawyers who haven't filed a single thing to unseal any of it. Uh, is it because all these media organizations, they're just not as smart as Lori Ellis? They don't see all this stuff being sealed up and think, hmm, something illegal's going on. Judge Boyce is telling the county clerk to comb through Lori Ellis's filings so Judge Boyce don't have to open them. Let me tell you what, Judge Boyce ain't going to open them because according to some of those codes in there, he can't allow her or anyone else, whether it's a media organization or some washed up attorney from Oregon and Arizona to make money off this case simply to get their way. It's just the way it is. This is my views. These are my opinions. Now, media organizations have twice already. They have fought legally. They have filed stuff to keep cameras in the courtroom. They, they've done that, and I'm all for that. But these media organizations are not sitting there leveling accusations against Judge Boyce, the grand jury, law enforcement, the state, uh, the state's team there. They're just saying we need transparency. But see, Lori Hellis can't look. She might put one little sentence in there about the Constitution. Everything else is about her, you see. Everything else is about her, uh, you know, wanting uh, to, to write this book and how she's just fed up. She's just fed up with all this stuff that's going on. No, this woman wants red meat, red meat for the masses. And, if, and you know what? We all want to know what we don't know. But I'm not willing, I'm not willing to jeopardize the integrity of this case. And Romans 13 verse 1 says, There is no power but that of God, and the powers that be are ordained of God. So Lori Hellis can whine and bitch and complain. She can continue to file whatever she wants. She's going to get her five minutes. She's going to get chewed up and spit out. If she gets anything at all, It'll be redacted from head to toe because the bottom line is, is there has been so much on both sides, the state and the defense teams, where they have been fighting back and forth, uh, fighting for the integrity of the grand jury indictment against Chad and Lori, fighting to keep Rob Wood's reputation and Rachel Smith's reputations intact. No prejudice either way. There are things John Pryor wanted to keep sealed that would have uh, showed something about his client. We would all like to see that. Well, can we not wait till the trial comes out? Can we not wait to see the evidence? Are we that uh, narrow-minded, short-sighted? And and I am and, and th again, these are my views. These are my opinions. And, and, and anyone that wants to disagree with anything I've said today, fine. I respect that. It's always been about what you've got to say. But I should be able to say what I want to say. And I will say this once and for all. Lori Hellis is going to write her book. And because she has inserted herself into this case, there are going to be people out here that are going to buy that book. This is one person that will not be buying Lori Hellis's book because she was willing, she was willing to level accusations against the integrity of this case. That's what she's, it, it ain't about no check and balance. Lori Hellis has no uh, horse in this race. There are many organizations. There is the Bar Association in Idaho. There is the Supreme Court. There are judges that are uh, conferring with Judge Boyce to keep him on the straight and narrow about all this. He's doing his level best. 
and he's made right decisions, whether we like it or not. And many of us don't like it that so much has been sealed. But the bottom line is, is Lori Hellis, she will do whatever it takes. She'll do whatever it takes. Even if it, even if it makes her look just so unprophetional. Uh, she, she just very unprofessional. And, you know, the, the bottom line is, is I want what the victim's families want. And they want transparency. But if you were to sit down and specify to any of them, hey, uh, would you want anything unsealed by Judge Boyce for Lori Hellis or anyone else in the public that would prejudice this case and cause a mistrial or call, cause appeals issues? If you can say, I would rather see the transparent, I'd rather see it all than think about what, you know, a fair trial really entails. Sometimes we just have to accept that we're not going to get to know everything. And, and a lot of it, I'm assuming, will be revealed um, in, the, in the trial as far as what we need to know is evidence. And, you know, Lori Ellis, she... Uh, she really needs to she really needs to stop and think about what her letter has what it looks like and i'm I'm very thankful that uh the media organizations haven't picked that up and and made a news story out of it and blown it all up for Lori Hellis if they thought it was relevant if it was real news, don't you think they would have uh you know wrote a story about it, but it's being relegated to other YouTube channels that support her. They're the ones getting the word out. They're the ones that are spreading that Judge Boyce isn't a good judge. What, Judge Boyce isn't a good judge because he won't let us see everything because he has laws that he has to follow, conduct that he has to follow? It's unfortunate. It's frustrating. We'd all like to know, but I'm not willing, and I, I don't think many are willing to see, um, you know, something go wrong with the fairness of this trial. And Lori Hellis doesn't give a rat's ass. She don't. She wants to uh, attack everyone without any proof at all. And these are and these <clears throat> and these things that she's saying, and the people on these YouTube channels that are echoing it for her. There, the, the bottom line is, is the people are starting to believe that. And, and uh, you know that's sad, because uh, you know it wasn't too long ago, like I said. Everybody thought Judge Boyce was doing a great job until he had to do the hard stuff, until he had to follow the laws and seal up things so that no one would be prejudiced. And according to law, medical, personal information, things of that sort. She doesn't know what's in those uh, sealed documents. All she knows is she's heard from an internet detective and she theorizes that maybe this is what this is about or that are about. I guarantee you, when John Pryor is saying he wants something unsealed about his beef with Rob Wood and Rachel Smith, he wants to basically show all over them. That's, and that's what Lori Hellis is doing. And so for anyone that wants to believe her, that's your prerogative. You do whatever you want to do. You want to believe these people out here that Judge Boyce isn't a good judge and that he's not doing his job. Uh, judge Boyce is doing his job. He's just not going to be a puppet for everyone. He's not in it for self-gratification. And he sure as hell ain't in it to promote someone's book. He's not in it so that Lori Hellis can make some money. All right? These are tough decisions that need to be made. And unless you've got a law degree, which I don't. I mean, I took pre-law in college, but it ain't even scratching the service of any of this. All I can give is my opinion. And Lori Hellis can give her opinion. But there's a difference between opinion and an accusation. And Lori Hellis has stepped over the line and she better just stay out of, steer clear of me. That's all I got to say. And again, if this uh, video gets taken down, y'all will have your answer. If you see anyone attacking me in the comments, you'll see, you'll, you'll get your answer because the bottom line is, is, uh, you, you have to ask a question. Why, why would KJ feel this way about Lori Hellis? Why would I do that? I already said she could do whatever she wants to do. But when she goes to accuse this case, the adjudication process through this, the pretrial and all that, and she's being accusatory, and she's trying to shit all over the law enforcement and the grand jury and everything else, uh, I can tell you right now where I stand. 
I stand for Romans 13, 1. And that is, there is no power but that of God, and the powers that be are ordained of God. And if God so wills it that the law, man's law has these rules and these laws that says that you can't prejudice either side, the defense or the state, the judge has to do that. This is a dirty, dirty uh, process. Uh, Chad and Lori are, are, they're cooked. They're, they're in a jail cell. They're like, you know, they're not going to leave. And so their defense attorneys are going to do whatever they can. And they have the help of Lori Hellis. Now, Lori Hellis has made it clear. She's made it clear. And uh, that's the way I see it. So please leave your comments. I put that to bed for OKJ. October 13th, there will be a hearing. Hopefully, we'll have the cameras in there. When Judge Boyce shoots that woman down um, verbally and legally, and it's going to be interesting to see what Rob Wood, Rachel Smith, and Lindsey Blake, John Pryor, and Thomas and Archibald have to say about Lori Hellis. Well, don't you understand? She's not in there attacking the defense at all, you see? She's attacking the state and the judge and the grand jury. So you have to wonder, whose side is this woman on? It's pathetic and it's wrong. Go check. See how many times the documents have been sealed. They have been relatively balanced between the defense and the state. And she chooses her side. I'll tell you what, I'm choosing my side. I'm choosing the administrator of justice, which is Judge Boyce. He is going to do the right thing every time. That's my view. It doesn't have to be your view, but I'll tell you this. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't see it any other way. I just, I just don't see it any other way. It's, it's sad. It's a sad day. I mean, there's a lot of people trying to make money on this that, that have no connection whatsoever to the victim's family members and not one of them will be there when this case is done and over with. They'll, they'll push aside the victim's family members and go on to the next big case because it's all about the money to them. It's all about it. That's what their motivation is. It's not about the Constitution. It's not about transparency. And, uh, you know, if, if it was, if I even had an inkling that Lori Hellis was doing this just so that she could be a check on all of this, I, I, but you see quite clearly what she's doing in her letter to that Supreme Court justice. She has, she's definitely, she showed her true colors and anyone that buys that book, that's their prerogative. I'll tell you what, it ain't gonna be worth a penny from old KJ. She didn't ask. She didn't ask any of the victim's family members what they thought of her letter to the Supreme Court Justice. She didn't ask the Supreme Court Justice to check in for Larry Woodcock about releasing the bodies of J.J. and Tylee. Take her time to throw that in there in a paragraph. Judge, will you please release the bodies? No, this woman has no, absolutely no empathy for the family. None. All she cares about is herself and her stupid ass book. And she wants to get her message out there. And there are people stupid enough to believe it and start denigrating Judge Boyce. There will be no more bashing of Judge Boyce on this channel. If he makes a wrong decision, we'll find out about it. But nobody's perfect. Nobody is. But he is going to do the best of his ability, and I'm not going to allow it. So if somebody wants to comment on here that Judge Boyce ain't doing this and Judge Boyce ain't doing that, fine. Do that. Say that. Comment. But you better back it up and say why you think he's doing it. Where's the evidence other than it so shows equally between the two parties that things are being sealed? He's being a neutral Neutral administrator of justice. And I guess really what it comes down to is people need to check themselves on why. Why they're, oh, Lori Hellis is a hero. She's want, they want to get more and more. And everybody does. Everyone wants to know more. I understand that. 
But I will close in saying this. You cannot put a price tag. You cannot put a price tag on justice. And that's exactly what's been going on here. People are, will do anything and all to make money off of this case. And, it, and, and, you know, not even considering that the victim's family members are the only ones, in my view, that should ever, ever make money off this case. Because all the money in the world for the victim's family isn't going to heal their trauma. It's not. But I'll tell you what, Lori Ellis and the rest of them, they should be ashamed of themselves. That's the way I feel. I will stick to my guns about it. And that's that. So, leave your comments and keep on looking.